in such a hurry, I'm not even going to let the transitions finish. But I'm going to take my time walking around a well I've walked around already 16 times. The next puzzle is a sliding puzzle, um, similar to the Seal of the Gersu Gates, but it's a little bit more direct and a little bit more obvious. A lot more obvious. So we'll just click on the shark mouth. Okay, this room is a definite upgrade from all the other rooms for every other puzzle we've played so far. It actually has a foyer entrance, a balcony overlooking, some writing over on a wall we can't read, and it just... Like, I feel like I just walked into a, to an old store that sells puzzles. Well, let's look over the balcony. Well, we hit the government district. Wait, we haven't really thought much about the lore of this area. Maybe these represent the houses the Oracle keeps talking about, and they are arranged in a hexagon like the sides of the well. The House of Tantram. The House of Creda. The House of Pora. The House of Sastram. The House of Kazalam. The House of Kavi. The Court of Convergence and Utsava. Another sliding puzzle. But, um, what are we sliding to what? Some of these have little shapes on them, and some of these are blank. Looks like you got three squares open here. Um, if you look all around the board, there seem to be four unique kinds of shapes and different numerics. This test upholds a pronounced weight, it seems in light of morning's dazzling messenger. Okay, that was the least sense he's ever made of all time. A consecutive order four times is your task, but only one succession of houses your path. Consecutive and four are the only things I got from that that seem to be in any way relevant. Things are coming in pairs of four, because you always use the word pair when you mean four. Um, here's this one vertical bar, two vertical bar, three vertical bar, and four vertical bars. One circle, two circle, three circle, and four circle. One little triangle thingy. Um, two little triangle thingies, three little triangle thingies, and four little triangle thingies, and then one square, two square, three squares, and four squares. So what slides into what? I mean, where are they supposed to... Oh, well... That was helpful. Uh, there's a little engravings on the area where we put the tile that tells us what tile needs to go where. And we can kind of guess or kind of have a better idea of where things are supposed to go because we can kind of figure, okay, if one's here, then two's here, then three's probably going to go be further and four's probably going to be further. And down there you have the four triangles and the three triangles. So I guess these little guys just stay in the middle when they're done. Can we move more than one at once? Yes, we can. That makes things a little bit easier, but 
I might stick with just one at a time just to have finer control over things. All right. Thinking about this puzzle at a high level. I like to think of it in terms of sections. There are four sections. Uh, the corners represent each section. So this section, this section, this lower right, and then the lower left. And moving everything within one section, I can just rotate around a couple times and I'll be back right where I was. But then there are two entry points where I can add something or where I can remove something if I have enough space and then keep rotating it. So I think that technique will be helpful to modifying things in a small way when we get to the point where we don't want to change much when we have a lot of the board already solved. Um, there are a couple ways we can approach this. We can either try to act like we're geniuses, super geniuses, and set up everything so it all falls into place, or we can brute force our way through this puzzle, starting with one side, then another side, then another side, then another side, until we finally get to a point where we have to mess up something we've already solved in a way that brings it back to where it was solved and just exchanges some piece positions so we can actually solve the rest of it. I'm going to go with the second option because I'm not a super genius, and I'm sure most people who perform this puzzle start by just solving, like for example, the stuff up here. Just brute force solve it and go ahead and see what happens. So, we need to put the two there, and then let's get this three going over here. I'm messing up the entire board with these movements, so it's a good thing I haven't solved the rest of it yet, or we have to be more careful. Now, if I move that there, I can't really move the four up there without moving the other two out of the way. And that might be a little bit challenging, so it might be easier actually to move the four in from where the three is right now, in that T intersection. Move that out of the way, move that up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that little thing where I can get the four underneath it, so I exchange the order of them. Um, and what that means is that the four is gonna go first, and then the three is gonna come from behind it, and then I guess I could set up that little circle thing, or maybe not. <laughs> um, maybe I should deal with that later and just carry these guys to the finish. Oh, I need to get that um, two triangle thing out of the way. So the best way to do that would be to... I'm going to stick this up there for the time being so I have two spaces to work in. Throw that there, throw that there, and then that leaves my opening. Uh, do that whole rotation thing, and that solves that. One, two, three, four. Let's see if we can solve one more side without messing that up. I'm pretty sure we can. Now, given the way things are ordered, since those are circles, we know that the one circle needs to be up there. And this is why that consecutive order of fours comes really helpful. Um, let's got to move that three triangle out of the way because it allows you to easily predict what needs to go where. So it's not incredibly annoying. So move that out of the way. Move that two there. Move that under to get that three. And now in order to get the four over there we need to move the three triangles out of the way. If I move this three down here, that three triangle represents a small break in what we want. So I need to get it out of the way. If I move this over onto the right side as a buffer, move the three triangles and then move that back, I can reverse my course and get right back to where I was only without the three triangles and now that side's done. This is going to be harder now because we're at a point where we can break parts of the solution in order to move other stuff into place. So let's start with what we can obviously do. We'll do the squares on the bottom. So I'm doing a little bit of a rotation back and forth to get that. Those blank things are just in the way and now we're going to have to start thinking and dealing with them. Well, 
one goes there, and now a blank is in the way of the two. I need to swap positions with them, and then the book will bring the three. I want it ordered so that the two goes in, then the four moves into port, and then the three can move there. That could be one way of uh, setting that up. We can't really move the four in until the blank's out of the way. So we do that rotation, and then, okay, good. Now we have to worry about getting those over there, and there's no way to do this without breaking something we've already done. So, three triangles, four triangles, and all the way down to one. So we need to swap these. The, if we can do that rotation and then swap some things in and out without affecting the rest of the relative positioning of the other pieces, we can mess something up and then put it back together again easily while alternating the locations of some things. And this is where I really feel around a little bit and just try to reorder things kind of short term. So all I know right now is I want to get those blanks out of the way. So let's focus on that first. I'm going to use the top area to do that. Now if I move that blank here, there's not enough space to push them in. But remember, we've already solved the ones, but we haven't, the, the vertical bars, I should say, but we haven't solved the triangle, uh, the uh, triangles yet. So I can move them around a little bit more freely, and also I can take advantage to kind of reorder them a little bit better. So it's one, two, three, four coming in. Fortunately, we still got that blank to deal with. I'm not exactly sure how to get that other blank out without messing up something more. I'll just keep moving things until they're back into position and then take a look at where things are. Um, hmm. I am messing up the order of the one and the two triangle to get that blank out of the way, which means I'll probably be messing up the setup that I just did. There's a lot of trial and error here. <laughs> okay, the blanks out of the way. The, the vertical bars are back in position. And everything is solved except for the fact that we have a different state now. We have two blanks uh, in the middle and then those two are kind of locked um, into each other. And we want to kind of get them on that little merry-go-round and move them into position. So if we can move that blank to, if we can move the two blanks to the right and bottom corners, right right side and bottom side, then we can just focus on our, our merry-go-round. I call it that because I want to. We now need to just adjust the positions of these two in order to have them go in correctly. Because right now the, the two, if, it, if we do the merry-go-round, the two will go in first and then the one will be behind it, but we want the one to go in first and the two to be behind it. So we need to swap their, their ordering. And this is where that T intersection is gonna come into play. So let's just keep our merry-go-round going until we can get them to that T intersection where we can do a little bit more with them. And then move that down there. So let's think, what's the best way to do this? Move that in, move that up, and now they're in the right order. That was actually quite easy. That's why the T intersections are so important. And what am I doing? Why am I going that way? Reverse direction, bring it back down, and then we're done. The biggest takeaway, if to take away anything from this, because this is very like brute forcey, is to think of things as a merry-go-round in each of the four corners, and the T intersection is where you can swap parts. It's where you can easily swap the ordering of pieces so that you can put the 
like for example in that case where the two was going to go first and the one was going to be behind it, I could easily swap them. If you need to swap more, you get to that T position, swap, go around again, get to T position again, swap again, and keep doing that until you've solved the puzzle. And that really is helpful in the end when you don't want to mess everything else up because the merry-go-round keeps everything relative to each other for the most part. And this is a very nice foyer area. This is a very nice room. Too difficult of a puzzle as long as you had the right idea of how to move things around without uh, breaking what you already have and making small adjustments it turns out to be rather simple in the beginning and just a little bit challenging towards the end which is the complete opposite of the next puzzle which is going to be challenging everywhere all the time and it will probably make me and everybody else cry The tasks resolved so far marked here are 17. 